Welcome back to the Save It For Parts channel. Recently I got a really interesting email from a fellow in Russia who works with a educational CubeSat. These are small low-cost satellites that can be launched by schools, educational institutions, or low-budget uh, research groups, and these are kind of the entry-level satellite. This one is apparently being run by School 29, which is outside of Moscow. This fellow named Alexei is the ground controller for this satellite, and he had some experiments that he asked me to help with. Specifically, he's trying to set up a QSL program uh, where ham radio operators can listen to the satellite, report their contacts, and get a QSL card. As part of this, Alexei is experimenting with specifically geographically targeted messages. So he's trying to send uh, specific messages from the satellite for a very short time over a very small area of the world. Now the satellite goes by a number of names, uh, RS-40S or Radio Satellite 40S. It's also known as UMKA, U-M-K-A, which is both an acronym and a reference to an old Soviet cartoon about a little polar bear. And then if you go on intoyo.com to track this, it's just called Object G. Now, when a Russian contacts me and says he wants to send a targeted message at me from Object G from uh, School 29, everything starts to sound a little bit James Bond, a little bit Cold War, but now I know Russia doesn't have the best reputation right now, but I still believe in international space cooperation, so yeah, I was willing to give it a shot. Originally it was supposed to be a small space telescope sending down astronomy images and doing some other scientific work. It sounds like they've had some technical issues with that part of the satellite, so they've switched over to a secondary mission uh, relating to ham radio. I believe the onboard transmitter is in the range of about one watt, and we're going to be trying to receive a one watt transmission from hundreds of miles away. Normally, at ground level on the Earth, that would be really difficult because you'd have trees, you'd have buildings, you'd have local interference from other stuff, but if the transmitter is straight up in the sky, and if we've got a directional antenna, which I do, then a couple watts or even one watt is really all you need, and I should be able to pick that up with just my software-defined radio, a laptop, and that directional antenna. That's the same antenna that I've used to listen to the International Space Station and do some other projects. I'll throw the link to the equipment down in the description. So I was just going to use STR++ on my phone along with Stellarium to track the satellite, but STR++ has decided it wants nothing to do with the SDR today, so it's always a little bit of black magic to get it working on an Android. Uh, there's a special driver that sometimes you have to load it, sometimes you don't, sometimes you have to plug it in a couple times, and today it just won't work for me. So uh, we're going to still use the phone for Stellarium for the heads-up display, but we'll have to get the real laptop out for the SDR. This is perfectly normal, right? I'm pretty sure everyone does work from home outdoors at 8.30 p.m. on a stack of milk crates. Stellarium does have an entry for this satellite, which is nice, although the satellite itself is still below the horizon, so we've got to wait a little bit till it comes up. I think if I'm understanding Alexi correctly, he's set it to transmit just during a short two minutes when it's directly overhead, so you might not hear an SSTV transmission the entire time. I'm hoping we'll still hear telemetry from it so I can see if I've got the antenna aimed correctly and make sure we're on the right frequency, that we're tracking the Doppler shift, all that stuff, but the actual window to receive this SSTV transmission I think is going to be pretty small. Uh, he did say he's going to set it up for another one tomorrow morning, so in 12 hours it will pass over again and we'll get another chance. Okay, we are getting something, and yeah, I think that might be the telemetry burst there. I am not seeing the SSTV yet. Okay, we were not able to see any SSTV signals from that satellite, at least not on this pass. I think something got screwed up on Alexi's end with the scheduling. Um, while we wait 12 hours for the next opportunity, I'm going to go ahead and try to decode the telemetry signals we got. So what I'm trying to do now is play back that baseband recording. So once those signals come through, they're basically little bursts of like modem tones. And we need to decode those from modem tones into text somehow, and then hopefully from there into telemetry. Yeah, there's one of those bursts again. A lot of people will do this with a virtual audio cable or some kind of internal audio pathway on one computer. I've never had good luck with that, so I'm actually just using two computers. The Linux box here is playing back the baseband recording, and then I'm just cross-connecting the headphone jack on the Linux computer over to the microphone jack on my Windows PC. I searched around online and I found some of this information on GitHub. There's a 
Umka One decoder that comes along with a sound modem program. There really are not any English language instructions for this. Apparently there's more information on the School29 website. My antivirus will not allow me to go to that website. It thinks it is far too Russian, far too sketchy to visit. So I'm just kind of left to stumble my way through this. I fired up the Umka One telemetry decoder. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the sound modem app, which is a separate program here. Now in the sound modem, um, again I found most of this out by trial and error and I might show some of the error in here, I might not, but uh, basically it's showing its own little waterfall down here of the audio coming in from the other computer. We want to uh, set our devices where the input device is the microphone. I believe I want dual channel. I want this uh, AGWPE server to be the same, uh, port 8003 as the decoder over here. And I could change that in either spot. Um, yeah, I think I leave the rest of this the same. And then I am looking at GMSK USP 4800 baud and that those mysterious numbers there describe what format the signal is coming in. This is the type of modem signal that we're getting. So theoretically, if we've done everything correctly, when one of those modem bursts comes across on the file recording, we should get something decoded out of it here. Now, since this is a low Earth orbit satellite and it moves pretty quickly, we've got some Doppler shift to worry about. So uh, the center frequency is about 437.625 megahertz. As the satellite comes towards us, it will have a higher apparent frequency. And as it goes away from us, it will have a lower frequency, just like a car passing you with its horn honking. So here we have the signal coming in at a higher frequency than our theoretical center. So I'm gonna center my SDR there. And as the pass progresses, we'll have to move our frequency down slightly to just compensate for that Doppler shift. Well, we're getting a bunch of data out of the modem program, but nothing is showing up here in the telemetry decoder. So not sure what's going on with it. Okay, it's about 12 hours later and we're gonna try this again. I talked to Alexi, he uh, changed some scheduling and hopefully it'll work this time. I'm gonna try two different things this time. I'm gonna try the handheld Yagi again since that seemed to have pretty good luck with getting the telemetry. And then we're also gonna try the big uh, 70 centimeter antenna here and just turn a bow fang onto that frequency and see if we can listen to the tones just directly on a radio. Um, I don't think I'm gonna get as good of a signal with that because that's a omnidirectional antenna versus directional. It might get uh, signals better from the low parts of the pass uh, when the satellite is on the horizon, but it probably won't get a very good signal straight up in the sky because it's tuned to get things from the sides. Okay, I'm trying to play this back. I'm getting the same deal again, just telemetry bursts. And same deal in the decoder. I am getting uh, the data packets coming through. However, I'm still not getting anything in that telemetry panel, even when I'm connected to the modem server. Okay, so I'm using another program called Sputnik's Telemetry Viewer. I'm doing the same thing as before. I've got my audio connection. So I've got one computer playing back the baseband of the recording of that satellite pass. And so this is our audio waterfall here. And you can see those faint lines there. That is a telemetry burst, but it's not quite strong enough uh, for this modem, the sound modem program to hear it. And then I've got this connected to the sound modem server. Um, so theoretically, if we get another telemetry packet over here in sound modem, this program should be able to read that and make some sense out of it. All right, it looks like that worked. We got our packet and Sputnik's telemetry has decided that it is a UHF beacon with some regular telemetry here. So let's go ahead and open this up a little more and see what we actually got. We've got uh, radio signal strength, idle, forward wave power. I'm not sure if this is just information about the signal versus about the satellite. Let's look at this other one, regular telemetry. So here we have solar panel voltage for panel one, two, three, and then we've got current from panel one, two, and three. Battery temperature in Celsius, looks like it's 12 degrees C. Um, battery two is 43 C. Not quite sure what all these mean, but we've definitely got uh, some interesting stuff here. So for that entire pass, it looks like I successfully received six telemetry packets 
and one NAC, whatever that is. I'm not quite familiar with this software, so I'm not quite sure how to get back to where I was before. I've definitely gotten myself lost in the user interface here. It's very confusing. So you can see the solar panel voltage down here changes quite a bit uh, with each telemetry packet. I don't know if the satellite has any stabilization on it or if it's just spinning or tumbling, so I'm sure each solar panel has a different amount uh, depending on the orientation of the satellite. Okay, um, pluses and minuses on that pass. We definitely got an SSTV signal, so the satellite is now working. Alexi's got his in working, he's sending the signal. On my end, um, my little cable here popped out halfway through, so I bumped this, knocked my connection loose, uh, lost part of the transmission, so we're probably not gonna get a full image. Uh, also, the Baofeng picked up nothing with the big antenna. Didn't really think it would, but um, it was worth a shot. Okay, to decode the SSTV signal, we're doing essentially the same thing. I'm playing back the baseband recording on STR++ on the right, and we're listening to it on the left with a program called MSSTV, and that is an SSTV decoder. I may have shown that on uh, previous episodes here where we messed around with the International Space Station. You'll have to forgive the flickering of STR++ on the right, it just does that. It's not because I'm recording the screen with the camcorder, it's actually flickering that much, and it looks exactly the same when I do a screen recorder, so we're just going to have to live with it. And Alexia has told me this is Robot72 format, so we'll go ahead and put it in that. Right now we're just getting static, we're not getting a picture, so it's just generating nonsense. Okay, so here comes the SSTV image. We're going to center that on our signal, and then over here we've got the image coming in. You can see uh, I dropped the antenna connection right there, so that is my fault, that is not uh, Alexi's fault or the satellite's fault, that's when I bumped the connection. I reconnected it here, and if I can center this again, we're back on track, we're getting the image coming in over here, and you can really see the Doppler shift here. I have to keep adjusting my tuning down a little bit because that satellite is almost directly overhead at this point in the recording, so it is moving very quickly, the Doppler shift is changing very quickly, and our frequency is uh, decreasing very quickly, so it's tuning down a little bit at a time here, just trying to keep the uh, SDR tuning right on the center of that signal. And our image there on the left looks like it's coming in very nicely, aside from the part that I screwed up. So here's what these modem tones actually sound like. Alright, that is the end trailer of the message. So we're going to stop playing this back. And yeah, we can blow this up and see what we got. So here is the image that was transmitted from the UMCA-1 satellite. Uh, this is about 320 by 240 pixels, so not huge, but that's fairly standard for SSTV. It's got the name of the mission down at the bottom in Cyrillic. It's got the little polar bear, and it's got an image of that 3U CubeSat. Pretty cool. All right, we're going to give this one final try to see if we can get the whole image. I am starting to see it, but he started transmitting a little bit early, so he's still very low on the horizon. It's getting better as the satellite gets higher, though. This was the other SSTV image I got. It's the same picture. It's a little fuzzier because this was a daytime image, and there is a lot more background radio noise in the day, mostly from the sun. It's blasting out radio waves in all frequencies, so it tends to wipe out a lot of transmissions, and that's why the image is pretty fuzzy. Okay, I finally got SDR++ working on my phone. I just had to insert the SDR with the adapter, uh, load the driver, open STR++, hit refresh a couple times, and it finally popped up. So now I can uh, double screen, or dual screen again, with Stellarium, so I can aim at the satellite, and I can listen to it down here, and I've used my Velcro tape again, so this is now my entire satellite snooping rig. Phone, antenna, SDR, 
very portable, um, much more portable than the laptop and everything. So, yeah, I, I'm going to try some other satellites with this in the future. I think this is pretty fun. So that satellite is still passing overhead right now, and I went out and listened to it one more time, but all that it was sending this time was telemetry again. Well, that was pretty cool. I was able to collaborate with someone on the other side of the world to schedule a specific transmission from a passing satellite, and after a couple tries, I was able to get the SSTV image that they were sending. So. Yeah, pretty neat. I'm going to definitely play around with more ham satellites in the future. That's always been something on my to-do list, and I've just never quite had time for it. So thank you to Alexi for inspiring me to get out and actually look at one specifically, increase my satellite knowledge, increase my ham radio skills, and practice something new. Like I said, I'll play around with this some more, and you might see some more videos of other CubeSats, other ham satellites in the future. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.